so thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I have basically been doing space insurance for my whole uh, professional life. Uh, so can you please uh, put the presentation on, on, uh, on the screen? Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, uh, I will just like to, to, to make a small uh, update on what's going on in the space, in, in the space insurance market because Unfortunately, those uh, last couple of years are uh, not uh, very standard for the markets and the market is in a difficult position. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so I'm sure uh, some of you or actually most of you are familiar with uh, the small world of space insurance. Uh, but, uh, however, I would like to, before, before making a presentation of the market, uh, I would like to give a couple of definitions uh that are common uh in uh, our small market uh so we'll we'll start by refreshing our memory uh so first of all when we speak of uh, space insurance uh let's agree that we mean uh, insurance of uh, satellite launches and uh, insurance of uh, satellites in orbit uh when i say in orbit uh, it includes uh, insurance of revenue revenues derived from uh, satellites in orbit uh, so we do not speak about uh, so-called ground risk insurance, which are assembly, uh, integration, testing, transportation, because uh, those risks uh, basically are uh, underwritten by other markets, uh, which are not uh, pure space insurance markets. They are closer to cargo insurance markets. Uh, and it's a different market, uh, which has an other dynamics and uh, it's not very interesting for us, really. Uh, and then uh, I would like to define uh, what is capacity of the market, because when we speak of space insurance market, you always hear uh, the word capacity. Uh, so when, when we speak of uh, capacity of an insurer, uh, we mean uh, that this is the amount of risk that this insurer can uh, underwrite for one launch or one satellite in orbit. Uh, so, uh, and you have two types of capacity, actually. You have theoretical capacity, uh, which is the maximum capacity uh, that uh, an insurance company declares. So the insurer says, okay, I, I can write up to X million uh, uh, dollars. But uh, an insurer will never use 100% of uh, its theoretical capacity because when you come to, to him to see him and uh, offer some risks, he will always uh, offer a, a smaller capacity than the theoretical. Uh, and so uh, we have... Um, uh, another definition with is uh, uh, working working capacity. And working capacity is the actual capacity that we can expect from an insurer uh, uh, for what for a risk that uh, let's say that it considers as being the ideal risk. So uh, it's a standard satellite, not so not very high sum insured, no anomalies, uh, proven uh, platform. Uh, and then uh, when we speak of market capacity, uh, that means we are speaking about the sum of individual capacities of uh, all the underwriters in the space insurance market. And uh, this is really uh, a, key, a key metric of, of the market because, uh, of course, uh, the higher is the capacity which is available to you, uh, better is the competition of uh, different insurers for the risk. Uh, and, of course, uh, when, it, when, uh, when you have competition, uh, you can uh, expect uh, price premium declines. Uh, so, uh, really, uh, in, in, all, in, all, in all situations, what you have to do is to maximize uh, the capacities offered to you uh, by the insurance market. Uh, so ne next slide, please. Uh, next slide uh, shows uh, the key metrics of uh, the space insurance. Well, like for all insurance markets, we have premium and claims. Uh, and uh, I have to say that the space insurance market is extremely volatile. Uh, and uh, that means that large losses, uh, you have, when you have a large loss, you have an immediate negative effect on available capacity because people just start panicking and running away and closing their business. Uh, and unfortunately, that's what we are seeing the last couple of years uh, with a good, uh, well, not so good example uh, of uh, last year failure of Falcon Eye. Uh, which is, uh, I think, the biggest uh, claim uh, in the insurance in the space insurance market uh, since its uh, its beginning. It was a total loss of uh, um, uh, Falcon Eye due to uh, a Vega launch failure, 
and it amounted to uh, roughly uh, 400 million US dollars. Uh, and after this loss, uh, really the market started to change because uh, as you see, uh, as you see on this slide, uh, you have since 2010, uh, the market was well profitable. You had uh, good premium levels, you had not uh, too much losses. Uh, and when you see that on, the, on any market, uh, of course, uh, you see that capital will come to the market. You see new players arriving because they, they, they see that you can make money uh, in this uh, type of insurance. Uh, and uh, those, those insurers who are already in the market, they try to increase their capacity. And of course, uh, like, I said, like I just said, the more you have capacity, uh, the more there's competition between uh, insurers for your, for your risk, and uh, the less is the premium. But uh, uh, in the end, what happens is that uh, the capacity is so high and the competition is so high uh, that uh, premium falls below a certain level, which uh, leads to a situation when uh, the premium for the whole year uh, that the market earns uh, during the one whole year is not uh, sufficient to cover uh, two uh, medium uh, losses for the year. So uh, that's basically what we have seen uh, in uh, 2019 and, and this year. You have uh, one large loss and a couple of smaller losses, which is well pretty pretty normal for for an insurance market to have losses. Uh, but uh, in the situation of overcapacity, when you have those uh, those couple of losses, then the market becomes negative, uh, and uh, uh, people start uh, well going out of the market because, uh, uh, like I said, it's it's very volatile and uh, the reaction is immediate immediate. So uh, some people leave the market uh, and some people uh, restrict their capacities uh, and uh, it's, it's really, it's, it's happening very fast. Uh, so next slide, please. So here uh, you see what happens with the uh, uh, market capacity. The outer ring is uh, launch capacity, the inner ring is in orbit capacity, uh, as you see, uh, in orbit capacity is always uh, uh, smaller uh, than uh, launch capacity. Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, 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 premium for launches are higher and the du duration of the risk is, uh, well, uh, much, much less than for in orbit because when, when we say in orbit, we mean uh, one year in orbit. When you said launch, uh, it's launch plus one year, but the premium is earned uh, at launch. Uh, and the main risk is, risk is launch. So uh, you know, insurers often prefer uh, putting their capacity in launch uh, because there's really more money there. It's, it's a real market driver. Uh, and so what you can see on this slide, uh, you can see that uh, since uh, the negative uh, events of uh, uh, 2019, uh, the capacities uh, have, have really reduced. You have 17% less in uh, for launch capacity and 25% less in orbit capacity. Uh, you have uh, even some uh, players like uh, uh, Swiss Re who decided to completely stop underwriting space. Uh, and uh, those underwriters who still are in the market uh, now have uh, now see strict uh, guidelines uh, from their top management. Uh, and uh, so sometimes it's uh, it's very difficult to obtain offers from them at all because uh, in theory they are still in the market. But due to excessive, excessive control of the management, uh, they, it takes weeks and months to, to get an answer. So uh, soft, often you have an answer after the, the beginning of the, the, the beginning of the policy period. Uh, and the result, of course, is, uh, is a big decrease of avail available capacity uh, and uh, a sharp increase of premiums. So next slide, please. So next slide is really what, what to summarize uh, the previous, what, what I've previously said. Uh, so you can see very well on this slide that uh, the, the less is the capacity, the higher is uh, the premium. And uh, you can add to this uh, the economical and financial crisis that we are facing now and the COVID-19 uncertainty. Uh, and uh, well, unfortunately rates have increased by 100% and more in just uh, one year. Uh, uh, and another thing that maybe uh, this graphic doesn't show, but you have to keep it in mind. Uh, insurers are now a little bit frightened uh, to show uh, bad results uh, to their management because, as I said, they are they, they are under 
really under supervision of the management due to uh, uh, losses uh, last couple of years. Uh, so, uh, uh, in addition to uh, the technical approach, uh, they are now a little bit frightened because they don't want to be the only one in the market to underwrite a bad risk, or maybe uh, they don't want to be the less expensive in the market, or they don't want to be uh, the one insurer who took a big share uh, in uh, in the program, whilst all the others uh, tended to minimize their exposition. So, so uh, we really need to reassure the, the underwriters if we want to have a successful uh, insurance placement. Uh, and and uh, because now a lot of insurers just want to pick uh, the safest risks, safest risks. They may, they are not interested by having high premium incomes. They just want uh, to, to not to lose their job and not to be a, a, not to have a very very, very negative result. Uh, so uh, it's not about uh, earning a lot of premium anymore. It's just to to stay uh, stay in the market. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, now you can see that uh, some of uh, the satellites, some of the platforms, some of the launch vehicles uh, cannot be uh, insured for 100% of the book value because uh, you just don't have enough capacity. Whatever the rate, whatever the exclusions, uh, for some types of risks, the market doesn't, just doesn't want to give enough capacity to uh, place insurance at uh, 100%. Uh, so next slide. What to expect? Uh, so, if uh, by chance or not by chance you are in need of uh, buying insurance now, what what to do? Uh, unfortunately, we don't think that uh, market will recover anytime soon. So, uh, if you need uh, to buy insurance uh, in the foreseeable future, uh, we will recommend to uh, start the negotiations with the market as soon as uh, reasonably practical. Well, uh, which is uh, several months between uh, in orbit renewal or maybe even seven several years before launch uh, because uh, in in the current market we really have we really, really need to have time uh, to develop a proper marketing strategy uh, we need to understand what are the market concerns uh, for a specific program uh, and we need to uh, answer the technical questions that we will have uh, and uh, this is really will allow us to attract more capacity and uh, have a bit better, rate, better rates at the end. Uh, and I will also recommend to uh, try to stick to the market standards because uh, in the previous year you have you had often uh, like some exotic uh, requests from uh, from in, from the insurance. So it, it would be a. a, a uh, duration of the policy, it will be maybe additional coverages. Uh, now, unfortunately, the market is hard and uh, it's not going to work. So, so the market will try to look at standard uh, insurance policies, uh, standard types of coverages, st standard durations. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will just waste time uh, to discussing these uh, deviations uh, from standard wordings. And uh, really, uh, the time should not be wasted now. We should put all the efforts in, uh, in negotiating more capacity and better rates. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, even more than before in the, the current market, it's uh, if you want to place a space, space insurance in the current market, uh, it's very important to appoint a professional uh, insurance broker or, or consultant to help you navigate uh, this uh, hard insurance market. Next slide. Uh, so, uh, just to finish a couple of words about my company, well, not about the whole company, Aeon, but uh, only for only about our space division. Uh, we have a dedicated space division at Aeon uh, who are doing only space insurance. They don't, they are not doing anything else. Uh, and it consists of 21 uh, experts and we have uh, offices in Paris, uh, in London, in Washington, in Madrid and uh, in Moscow. Uh, so basically, we are present uh, in all the countries where the space insurers are. So of course, I I every office uh, is responsible for negotiation negotiations with its uh, markets based on geography. Uh, we have the largest share of insurance market. Well, every broker every broker claims to have the largest largest share of uh, the market because it depends on how you count. Uh, we believe that uh, we believe that. Uh, 
uh, as uh, I said before, um, launch insurance is uh, well really the market driver. So uh, if you want to have the real share uh, of the market, you have to uh, look at the shell of launches that a broker plays uh, amongst all the launches for the year. Because uh, so, some brokers will say, okay, uh, we have the largest premium share, but if a broker brings high premium, that might mean that uh, the broker is not so good because our task is to bring better rate. Uh, so uh, if we speak about uh, about market share in uh, number of launches, we are the number one and we have been so for like 10 years. And finally, we have uh, a lot of experts in, uh, in our teams which are not uh, purely insurance. So a lot of them come from, come from uh, uh, satellite uh, manufacturers. Uh, they used to negotiate contracts. Uh, they used to do risk management there. Uh, and uh, we have uh, two empowered officials for ITAR and ER, so uh, uh, we, can, uh, we can manage this kind of information as well. Uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, if uh, uh, you have any issues or questions uh, related to space insurance or uh, risk management, we will, we will help you. Thank you.